Washington State Supreme Court imposes different standards on police seizures for BIPOC and Hawaii. They're literally violating their own laws and discriminating against white people. The two identical factual circumstances of a police encounter may result in different judicial results depending on whether the person is BIPOC or non-BIPOC. This is a good example of how social justice and racism uh, verbiage and language accelerated by the Bernloot murder riots of current year months, too, have penetrated the judiciary. Well, it's Washington, so they've long been known as a racist hellhole, just like Oregon and California. The Washington State Supreme Court is just a sweeping opinion announcing that whether a person is deemed seized uh, by the police must take into account the race if the person is black, indigenous, or other people of color. BIPOC status, the court ruled on June 9th, current year, is relevant to whether a person was not free to leave to refuse a request or otherwise terminate the encounter. So two identical factual circumstances of a police encounter may result in additional, different judicial results depending on whether the person is BIPOC. BIPOC is the term used a dozen times in the opinion, uh, but BIPOC is a poorly defined uh, broad term that puts uh, otherwise disparate groups into a racial category. It also is a term that can have absurd results, such as Elizabeth Warren argue, arguably qualifying as BIPOC since she claimed to be Native American and was treated at Harvard Law School as a women's of color. She's just transracial like Talcum X. Yeah, one of Burn Loot Murder's uh, champions is like is whiter than albinos, man. Like Talcum X walks by an albino. The albino's like, God damn, man, I got a nice tan compared to you. And yet somehow he passes as black. Now, BIPOC as a term also conflates important distinctions among various groups as to experience with police stops and perception of policing and police reform. It's for that reason, uh, many racist activists and academics object to the term BIPOC, viewing it as erasing the unique experience of black Americans. <laughs> it's not racist enough. They want to make it even more racist. No, BIPOC is a recent term that came uh, common with uh, the uh, riots of current year minus two. While the New York Lies found a current year minus nine reference to the term, this Google search trends chart shows the surge of the term in current year minus two. Now, that's also my lived experience with Cornell University, where I work now, commonly using the term, which, uh, created, which created an internet age when applied to rock climbing class. Hmm, Cornell's not alone. BIPOC is the hot word on campuses and among activists. So if you see someone overusing it, you know that's someone you should probably not listen to. The case before the Washington Supreme Court involved a person named uh, Paula Suma, identified as Asian Pacific Islander, approached by the police in a high crime area while sleeping with a friend in a car. The police asked Suma for identification. He provided a false name and birthday, then took off in the car when the policeman returned to the police vehicle to check the info. His conviction for fleeing the scene is not disputed, only his conviction for providing false information to the police. If the false information was provided pursuant to an unlawful seizure, the information was not admissible as evidence. How do they have the money to, um, to keep pursuing this? You know, the issue before the court was whether asking for identification in this circumstance was a seizure such that the police needed uh, either a warrant or to prove an exception to a warrant requirement. The court made it clear that multiple uh, points that in the opinion that I was deciding the case under the Washington State Constitution, which is said, uh, which is said contained broader protections than the Fourth Amendment of the U.S., unless you're white. The court held that uh, this was a seizure and reiterated that soon being BIPOC was an essay consideration. The court did not uh, need to issue a sweeping declaration as BIPOC status, but chose this case uh, to set down uh, a marker. Here's an introduction summary of the opinion. Emphasis added. So let's let's just skip the boring shit and get to the emphasis. We have not explicitly held that in interactions law enforcement, race, and ethnicity matter. We do so today. So the racists are finally outing themselves. It's uh, you know the mask is off. Now, for purposes of this analysis, an objective observer is aware that implicit institutional unconscious bias against white people, in addition to purposeful discrimination, have resulted in disproportionate police contacts, uh, investigative seizures, and use of force against uh, BIPOC in Washington. Yeah, Washington, eh, man, you, you, can, you can have all this. Under this ruling, uh, consideration of BIPOC status is mandatory because an objective observer in determining whether a person is free to leave would be aware of the implicit institution and unconscious bias that could lead to a BIPOC person not feeling free to leave. It would also uh, not it would not matter if the person was part of a BIPOC group that did not experience police discrimination. <laughs> oh, of course. The court made his opinion various other times. We hold as a matter of independent state law that race and ethnicity are relevant to the question of whether a person has been seized by law enforcement. They're admitting their racism and uh, like see the the Washington Supreme Court they they should be removed for this.
and and actually tried for for race. I don't know what can you try them for. And th- at the very least, they they did violate non discrimination laws. As a result, the relevance of race and ethnicity and seizure inquiry cannot uh, turn on whether there's been recent web publicized discrimination uh, and violence by law enforcement directed at individuals of the same race or ethnicity as the allegedly seized person. In sum, while it's true there's no uniform life experience or perspective shared by all people of color, heightened police security of the BIPOC community is certainly common enough to establish the race and ethnicity, at least some relevance to the question of whether a person was seized. The cops are probably just going to stop patrolling minority communities now. They certainly uh, could be specific facts of an encounter that could lead to a court to consider the race of the person and the and police as to whether there was coercion or that an objective was overview as re- rendering a person not free to leave. But the court's opinion goes far beyond that. It presumes that the BIPOC status is enough to make race a factor. It doesn't mean every encounter between a BIPOC person and police is a seizure, but under this opinion it creates that presumption. Yeah, the actual racists are, are that they really have been going all out, man. This presents a problem for policing because police will need to determine BIPOC status at the time of the encounter. Oh, and it, uh, it's important what you identify as. You know, Pierce County Prosecutor Mary Robnett, who was office handled the case in a statement Thursday in an appellate court ruling, uh, whether it's a narrow decision or an expansive one, I hope this will bring clarity. Unfortunately, this decision will likely further confuse law enforcement officers about their interactions with the public. Police officers and trial court judges especially are facing some confusing uncertain times ahead as they try to correctly apply the court's ruling. Uh, Or you can just not and forget this happened. Uh, Prosecutor's office spokesperson Adam Favors of Viena, our office asked the Supreme Court in this case to recognize that race and ethnicity may be a factor in deciding whether someone has been detained. Today's decision went further and appears to elevate this factor above all other factors, including immigration status, religious affiliation, disability, gender, yada, 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 whatever. Police are already trying to figure out how to treat persons based on the racial factors the court imposed. And if you're white and you're mistreated, you should sue them. No, Spokane County Sheriff Ozzy uh, Nezovich said he was briefed on the decision Thursday and deputies would be advised in an upcoming training bulletin, new procedures for dealing with the concerns of uh, that minority members of the community might be, might have, will be tested during the quarterly training sessions in mock scenarios. <laughs> All right, man, more training. We have unusual circumstance that objectivity of uh, adjudicating a police encounter is anything but objective. Washington State objectivity is a subjective based on assumptions and presumptions that anyone who is non-white and necessarily will be will be intimidated by an encounter with the police, such that even asking for identification will be deemed a seizure. Or a white person in the same circumstance and the same facts would not be deemed seized, which is important for implications for a treatment in the criminal justice system. Same facts, different results based on race. I've been talking about this. Since the dawn of my channel, this exact shit has existed forever, except the discrimination was based on gender, not race. There has long been a sentencing gap in our legal system where women get off easy for committing the same crime as a man and the man gets the book thrown at him. It's been happening longer than I've been alive. And nobody fucking cared. When it was women being given preferential treatment, nobody cared. And now that it's applying to race, everyone is, well, this is a problem. We shouldn't be doing this. Now, to highlight the absurdity, uh, what about white people who self-identify as BIPOC like Elizabeth Warren? And if you're a man, just identify as a woman too. So this is a good example of how social justice and racism verbiage and language accelerated by burn, loot, murder, riots of current year have perpetuated the judiciary. BIPOC is known to find overly broad and relatively new categorization of different groups that only have a common amount of skin color that would uh, render them non-white. This is what it has come to. So they were already discriminating against men. Now they're going to add whites to it. <laughs> 